Hello, hello. How is everyone doing tonight? Oof, streaming is very nerve-wracking. I don't know how people do this. Um, and then we'll get the, the keyboard box. Is the volume coming out okay? Get this out of the way. Cool. Well, I hope everyone's doing um, okay this evening. As mentioned, the keyboard I'll be building tonight is the Mode 80 10 keyless keyboard. And the, uh, not, not the group buy, the pre order price for this keyboard was $480, which is pretty expensive. Um, but what do I what I appreciate about the um, way that Mo handled it was that it was a pre-order, so meaning that unlike in group buys where you, the uh, manufacturing process starts after the money is collected, Mo already um, kicked off the process and was just um, essentially just doing doing pre-order. So I appreciate that because you get a keyboard a lot faster, and there's less uh, there's, there's a little bit less risk. And this is definitely like one of the fanciest keyboards I have unboxed it comes to this really nice case and has a nice little message up here keyboard has become integral to our work play and creative expression the AD elevates the look sound and feel of this essential tool we hope your experience with us with it is as fun as it is fruitful so a nice little message here comes in this pretty pretty nice case Let's box out of the way I was I, I wasn't expecting for it to come to a, a carrying case. It has a nice little handle on top here, but that's not what we're here for. So let me open it up. All right, so you get a clean microfiber cloth with the Mode logo on there. And wow, I've never um, had a keyboard come sh shrink wrap in plastic. This is this is a whole new experience for me. Um, it's nice though. This is the uh, Celesto colorway, so it's a white top with a accent gold bottom piece here. Let me just open this up real quick, just very carefully. Okay, that's good enough. Ooh. Sorry, it's kind of noisy. It's like one of those chip bags. Okay, let me get some first impressions on this here. So this is an e-white finish on the top piece. Um, and it looks really good. I mean, I hope so for $480. Uh, looks like it's held together by three screws on the bottom. And there's a little plastic... Uh, hex screw there for uh, to hold it together uh, yes and this is what the side profile looks like so it actually has a seamless uh, side profile here uh, no Tom it's not the final product I still gotta build it <laughs> um, yes yeah, this is really nice so it has a um, what what Mo call a state uh, stack mount um, system for the plate, and I'll, I'll go more into it a little bit, um, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, but put this out of the way here. What also impressed me was that all of the extra bits come nicely wrapped in these bags here. I thought this was kind of excessive, but it's, it's really nice. Uh, so you have the aluminum plate here, which is what the stock kit comes with. There's also the JST connector, and the hex, and it also gets you the hex screws and Allen wrench. Um, I never built a keyboard with a JST connector before, so it'll be something new for me. Um, oh, you had the bond feeds here. We should definitely install the bond feeds in just a second. Uh, we have, this is the middle, middle gasket between the plate and the PCB. I'm going to skip the middle gasket just because I don't really like an overly muted sound profile. And that's what you get when you add in the foam in the middle between the plate and the PCB, but it's there if you want it. Uh, I got the solder PCB. We'll be using the solder PCB today. And 
Uh, oh, wait, nope, sorry. This is the metal gasket. What did I just throw away? They both, uh, okay, I'll figure it out in a bit. Okay, this is the bottom gasket and you do need this to build the keyboard due to the stack mount design. And then these are all extra bits I bought. So I bought an extra hot swap PCB um, and also with the gaskets on there. Oh yeah, sorry, I bought a palm plate extra. That's what this is. So I'll be building it with the palm plate um, instead of the aluminum plate. Um, but yes, Albert, I agree. This is some really, really nice packaging here. Um, let's uh, let's take a look at this one first. Actually, sorry, nope. I'm gonna install the feeds first before I totally forget. This is usually what I do first when I start when I uh, build a keyboard is install the feet. Um, let me just cut this up real quick. Okay. So um, this isn't the first keyboard that mold uh, mode came out with, but it is basically an iteration of a different color. The mode first edition was the first keyboard. Um, and that one, I heard that it had some issues with the rubber feet not fitting correctly, but I believe it's in fix for this iteration. And from just watching the videos that I saw in Discord, what you want to do is stick it on one side for the hair here. Stick it on one side first, uh, very carefully, and then use your fingers to push down along like this. And that's not, it's sticking out a little bit here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it off and redo it. All right, let's try this again. Okay, I think that one's better. And then apply some pressure. Huh, it's still a little bit long. What am I doing wrong? Hmm, let's, let's go with the top one. Maybe things will be different with the top one here. So we want to put side here and then you know, put down more pressure this time. And still, Hmm, interesting, it's still sticking out. I don't know what's up with that. Because I don't think I can get it to the left anymore and still, it's still sticking up to the right here. Okay. I am going to take this and put it over here and try the other one. Oh, I wonder if it got stretched. This one does look a little bit longer. Okay, let me try to be more careful with this one here. And then with the other one, maybe I'll, I don't know, I'll cut it or something or, or buy some extras. Yeah, I think you're right, Thomas. I think I'm stretching it. So I'll try less pressure this time. Okay. And just gently pressing it over. Okay, that one fit a lot better. Um, I'm going to figure out how to fix this one later. One feet for now is fine. Put this off to the side. Yeah, I wonder I wonder since I already stretched the first one, I wonder if there's a way to compress it. Um I'll figure it out. If not, I think they sell extras on the site, so I'll just probably just get some extras. Okay, I'll put this off to the side here. And let's open up this first package here. So this is the JST connector. So this is the daughter board. So essentially, um, in case you didn't know, a lot of PCBs, they have the USB-C connection on the PCB itself. 
but for this keyboard and a lot of like high-end customs the USB-C connection is separate from the PCB so you can see that there's a little um, hole here where the JST connector essentially goes and the reason why um, keyboard designers do that is due to different um, plate mounting systems. So with this um, stack mount, which I'll go into more detail to later, as you're typing, um, you can compress the plate and PCB up and down. So that can move the connections by s having the USB connection be separate, it um, resolves that issue. We have a nice little mode sticker here. Uh, I don't generally put stickers anywhere, so I'll probably just put it in a box or something. Alright, so, and this is the aluminum plate, and I'm not going to be using it. Um, so the, the aluminum plate that comes with this keyboard will be anodized in the same accent color as, as your keyboard. So in my case, it's gold. And this is actually upside down, or actually, well, I wanted to show you um, these gaskets here. So on the metal plates with this keyboard, which is the aluminum and brass plates, they have these gaskets around the plate here. And the reason why um, they're, they're there is because it prevents, it prevents metal on metal contact due to the uh, mounting system. Um, but we're not gonna be using this aluminum plate, so I'm just gonna play it back. Okay, why, I, why don't I show you the, uh, the actual plate that I'll be using? Let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, open this up here. This is a palm plate, and um, I do have another keyboard that's a palm plate, but it's one of those stack acrylic ones. Um, we're not acrylic. It's, it's all it's all palm. Uh, I don't have it here right now, but it's a lot thicker than what a usual than what a usual plate is. So a usual plate is 1.5 millimeters, like this. Um, so I'm not used to uh, how like flexible this is. This is like extremely bendy. Oop, I am just wrong camera. So this is the this is the black palm, and yet it's like super flexible, uh, which is very nice. So I like more of a flexi uh, typing experience, which is why I opted to go with a palm plate. And I think palm, I've heard type a bunch of typing tests on YouTube and it seems like palm plates and Gateron inks go well together. So we're gonna, hopefully that works out. Um, as I mentioned before, since this is a not metal plate, uh, there's no gaskets on this plate versus the aluminum one. And do, do, do. Okay, next up, uh, I guess we'll take a look at the PCB. This is uh, essentially like the brain of the keyboard here. Um, I've already tested the PCB to make sure that it works just to save some time on the stream. Um, but this PCB is like incredibly clean. Like look at this matte, uh, I guess it's more glossy actually, glossy black PCB. And look at those traces, these traces are super clean. Especially when you're looking at the traces of some keyboards like, um, I can't think of any right now, but there are a lot of keyboards, that, oh, like the drop keyboards where they do all tr auto tracing. So the machine just, just does the traces for you. Those can look extremely messy. This one looks looks pretty nice. Not like it matters in the end because it would just be in the keyboard, um, but I appreciate how nice this PCB looks. Hey, Charlie, glad you make it too. I'm glad you can make it too. Okay, uh, we're gonna put this to the side for a little bit. My side means that's under my desk. And lastly, I just wanna show you all the bottom gasket here. So this goes to the bottom of the keyboard. Uh, wow, this is like super soft. So essentially, this goes on the bottom and then I believe then the uh, plate and PCB what was the stack mount? Uh, it'll, it'll probably make more sense as I actually open it up. So let's let's just go ahead and open it up. Get this out of the way here. Uh, I do have the mode build guy up just to make sure I'm doing this right. Um, okay, put this to the side here. So the first um, the first thing that they're saying to do 
is to remove the bottom case. So there's this one little plastic hex screw here that's holding it in. Oh, I need to put these screws somewhere. Uh, okay. So the big hex Allen wrench is for the case, and I'm assuming the small one is for the JST connector in the case. I also have three screws for the case and four for, uh, I guess, the, the daughter board here. So let's, uh, I'm gonna put the three big ones to the side here, clean up a little bit. Okay, let's take off the middle one. Okay, and let's take out the middle piece, oh, sorry, the bottom piece. Oof, okay. So this bottom piece here is just, <laughs> it's just a big wedge essentially. Uh, yeah, it looks really nice though. Really nice wedge. Ah, I wish I got that first feed in right, that's okay. Okay, and then this is the top piece here. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm used to uh, looking at top mounted cases or other like traditional gasket mount cases. Um, so this, this case is interesting where it's only held together by these three posts here. Um, so that does make this assembling a lot easier. But uh, let's go ahead and install the JST connector slash daughter board. I'm gonna take this out, throw it aside. Okay, so it looks like I just gotta put this right here. Take the small screws and the small Allen wrench and attach it. So these are cool. Make sure I need to make sure to not over tighten. Oops. Okay, it got stuck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's this way, right? I'm not crazy? Okay. Yep, I think it's that way. I don't know why I'm having such difficulties with this. Hold on. <laughs> Maybe I'll just put a screw in first. The wedge, the hole here makes it a bit difficult. Okay, here we go. Screw that in a little bit. I uh, guess you can't really see what I'm doing because it's kind of far away, but it's really not that interesting. I'm just screwing it in to the hole here for the connector. And I'll make sure, uh, yep, that, that is the right way. I'm just making sure it's not upside down. No, nope, that's a good question. We can actually, let's weigh this wedge, uh, wedge after I attach his daughter board, which I am, I'm struggling so much right now. Oh my Lord. Okay. Come on into the hole. Okay. Okay. I am going to use tweezers. Tweezers are too big. Wow, this is probably going to be the most difficult part of this build. Okay, there we go. All right, two in, two more to go. Uh, oh, it looks like there's an extra screw, I guess, just in case you lose one. I'll put that back in the bag. And okay, let me just make sure these are tightened, but not overly tightened. Okay. Put these back here. Get my scale. Do. All right, I'll, I'll measure it in pounds first because American, and then I'll change it to grams. 
Okay, I think being on a desk mat is making it a bit weird, but that's fine. It's only it's barely anything. Okay. So the wedge by itself, well, with the daughter board, is 2.2 pounds, about or about uh, 109 grams. And then let's take a look at this top case here. This top case, oof. Okay, it's about 562 grams or 1.2 pounds. So the wedge in the top case is about 3.4 pounds or something like that. And we'll measure it again when the, I fully pull out the keyboard. Cool. Okay. The daughter board has been attached. The next step is to install the stabilizers. Put this off to the side, the ground. Okay, so let's take our PCB. And let me grab my stabilizers. Okay. So the stabilizers are for the longer keys on the keyboard. So things like the enter key, backspace, and shift. And I'm using the Durox V1 smoked uh, housing, just to match the housing of the black inks. And I've already lubed the 2U stabilizers. I haven't done the spacebar yet, so let's go ahead and just do that real quick. And I am going to put on some gloves because I hate having grease, cry talks all over my fingers because it's kind of a pain to wash. Okay. So for the housing, I am going to be using Crytox 205G0. Um, you can buy this in a bunch of places now. I guess I bought this from uh, Teal Technic. I bought this one a while ago, actually. And open this up. And then for the wires, it's going to be dielectric grease. Uh, I bought this Mode 80 back in December. It was not a group buy. It was a pre-order uh, because the manufacturing was already in place while the ordering was up. So I only had to wait like a couple months or so. Okay, so just in case y'all don't know how this works, uh, this is the housing for the stabilizers. I'm going to put some Crytox 205G0 just basically all over here. And this dielectric grease here is a thicker um, grease for the wires. Um, it's too thick for the housing because it'll make the stabilizer feel very stuck and mushy. Um, so that's why 205G0 is used. Uh, yeah, Andy's like my long lost cousin. I, I probably found him on 23andMe one day. Yeah. Let's see here. Okay, that's the first housing. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what sand, <laughs> I'm not sure how sand is good for stabilizers. That sounds like a terrible idea. Uh, I wish I had a zoom lens right now. I have a prime lens. If I had a zoom lens, I would just zoom in to make this easier. Uh, cool. Okay, that's good enough. And now you can just put um, this little bit here uh, back into the housing. I don't really know what this is called. Stem, I guess stem would be the right word. You put the stabilizer stem back into the housing. Um, oh, hey Zeus, thank you so much for the super chat, man. You appreciate it. You didn't need to do that. Okay, that's the stem in there. And then put the second stem into the housing. Cool. All right, uh, wires time. So the wires is honestly where it gets really messy. Um, the, looping that the the stabilizer housing is fine. I usually just like stick this wire 
in here and then pull it out uh, just like a blob now on it and then I usually like to take another brush a different brush and just kind of spread it around a little bit this is because um, you remove the rattling noise from the stabilizer um, from doing this the rattling comes from the wires is rattling inside the housing essentially Uh, you can buy Duroc staffs off Amazon. They're under a different name. I can't remember what they're called anymore. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely buy a set of them off Amazon. They're just Duroc stabs. Uh, I don't know if you can buy the V2s yet. I know that you could buy the V1s, but I haven't bought stabs in a while. So that's why I'm not sure. So now you just got to put the wire into the housing here. And let's make sure I'm doing this right. Let's see. And then you wanna just clip it back into place here. Uh, just like that. Just making sure I put it in the right one, okay. And then just take the other end of the wire, dip that in. And then just kinda, I just spread it around a little bit. Uh, cool. And then put, attach it to the second housing. Make sure the housing is not upside down. I've done that a couple of times, but it's no big deal because you can just reattach it. Okay, there we go. All right, stabilizers are lubricated. Let me put this stuff away now and get rid of these gloves. <laughs> Okay. Next is to attach the stabilizers into the to the PCB. Let me grab the screws. Here and oh, I need a screwdriver. I believe they're. I think they're. Phil, I think they're Phillips heads. Yep, Phillips heads. I got these soldered. PCB over the hot swap. I actually bought a hot swap PCB as well, but just because I wanted to use Gatoron inks on this board and I desoldered the Gatoron inks from a previous board and you can't use these hard switches with hot swap sockets because there's leftover solder on it, which makes the legs a little bit thicker. Um, so these don't fit anymore. Okay, this one should be good. And with these stabilizers, I have uh, some washers that I bought off Amazon. Um, and really the washer is a precaution, just to make sure the screws don't touch the traces on the PCB itself. And that can cause like shortings and things like that. Um, but generally it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal if you have one of those like, uh, a Swiss cheese PCBs where there's like a bajillion bottom roll support and you have like just traces and uh, holes everywhere. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I have a 7U space bar here. I'm gonna install that first. And this is up, this looks upside down. Is this upside down? I'm going. I feel like this is upside down. That looks more right. Okay, there we go. Yeah, arrow keys on the right. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm on the right one. Okay, yeah, should be this one here. So the legs of the stabilizer clip into the larger hole of the PCB and there's a smaller hole where you screw it in. So let me just get a screw. Oop, that one came off. Do, do, do. Put the little washer in here. I'm gonna flip this over. 
oops. And then put the screw to the hole. Take a screwdriver and just screw that in. go and then just do that seven more times do, do. did anyone have any questions about anything while I do this very boring task of screwing in stabilizers oops get a better grip on this here we go keep the PCB down, make it easier for me. Oop, I'm not sure where the washer went. It's okay, I have extras. Oh, it's on the PCB. Okay, there we go. Oops, I think I need to push this down. Okay. Hello, hello, welcome to the stream. We're installing stabilizers and stabilizers now. Okay, so that's the space bar. Now I just need to do the left shift, right shift, and enter. Left shift, right shift, enter backspace. Yep. Okay. So let's do the left shift first here. You can use Crytox 205G0 on the wires. Um, I used to do that, but it's not as thick as dielectric grease. So over time, you may need to re-lube it. Um, I found that to be the case on one of my other keyboards. But also, uh, Crytox is just way more expensive than dielectric grease. I mean, uh, this whole thing here, when I bought it, it's more expensive now maybe because people are buying it. This whole thing costed me like, four or five bucks on Amazon, and this is gonna last me a bajillion keyboards, but Crytox is way more expensive. Ooh. Ooh, what got me into this hobby here? Uh, I, when I was a college student, uh, I, I just stumbled upon the Canonical Keyboard subreddit one day uh, because I had a, I had a Corsair Kia mechanical keyboard and I always thought it was really cool about how you can essentially, um, you know, just customize the keyboard in any way that you want. Um, and I really just like all the different themes, the different layouts, and the uh, different feelings I can have with switches and things like that. And I just was, I was a big lurker for, for a while. And then when I graduated from university and got a job, that's when I had some um, spending money, that's when I started to to get into actually building and buying stuff. So I guess the answer is I just found the subreddit one day and yep, that's dangerous when you find subreddits for certain things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so solder versus hot swap. Um, I, have the, I have the solder here. I also bought the hot swap PCB as an extra just because I like buying extras. Um, but I bought the solder one mainly because I wanted to use my Gateron Black Inks, um, which I desoldered from another keyboard. Um, so they have some leftover solder on the legs. And when you do that, you can't use it on the hot swap PC anymore because it won't fit in the socket. That's why I have desoldered PCB here. But if I didn't um, want to use those, I would have just used a hot swap PCB. I think hot swap PCBs are perfectly fine if you're fine with the limitations of the layout of support. Uh, yeah, for stabilizers, um, I mean, if, if it's a uh, plate or screw in stabilizers like this, uh, Duroc um, have great stabilizers. Um, this is the Duroc V1 screw in stabilizers. Uh, I don't really recommend you buy the cherry ones because those aren't as good anymore. So Duroc's are good. Um, 
C3 also makes screw and stabilizers that are more colorful and those are fine. They had some issues with the first batches. Like I joined the first batch of C3 stabilizers and they don't return properly on P on P P B T keycaps. So you get stuck. Um, so I just don't use them. So I guess like and I essentially just wasted like 20 bucks or so, but it's fine. Uh, but the C3 stabilizer these days work just fine with any keycaps. Okay. Yep, uh, Prime Keyboard's a great vendor. I buy from them a bunch. Uh, screen, screen, screen. I also buy from Ringer Keys, 3D Keys. Um... I think those ones, yep, yeah, I think those ones are the main ones. I used to buy a lot from Novel Keys when they were like the only, basically the only vendor at play. Um, but there's, there's a bunch of vendors now and they all do, they all do a great job. So I, I, I really appreciate how e much easier it is to buy stabilizers and switches and stuff these days. Even though that some of them do sell out kind of fast, um, generally you can, you can find what you want if you really want it. Uh, why am I blanking out where the entry key, oh, here it is, yep. Yeah, this is my first 10 keyless. Uh, so I guess I'm not used to just how big the PCB is. I've built a lot of like 65% and I guess I can just find the stabilizer holes a lot easier on those. Let's see. Two. Yeah, I really should get some tweezers for this. Um, what is a good price for a first build? Okay, there, there's, there's some pretty good budget options these days for a first build. Um, you know, I've never tried the NK Entry Editions yet, um, but I've heard good things. Um, so that starts at about, what, $95? Um, so $95 for, for the case. Oh, I, okay. I will use a different one. $95 for the case. And then switches would be, uh, let's just say 55 to 65 cents each. Cause I don't think you should buy Zillow. I think Zillow switches are just way too pricey these days, especially for a newbie. So let's say 55 cents switch, that's what, uh, 30 bucks. So that's $125. And then there's keycaps. Um, you can find, you can join group buys for nice keycaps, but those runs upwards of a hundred or more. So that gets really expensive. You can find some budget keycaps um, from different vendors for I think around 60 or 70 bucks or so. So in total, I guess you'd be under 200, which is, I, I still think is kind of pricey for a first build, but it's definitely more affordable now. Um, I guess like when I when I tell people like I'm to this hobby and they're like, how much I spend? And then I, 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 I the, the math in my head, I'm like, damn, that's still kind of a lot of money. Um, so yeah, let's see. <laughs> I think for people who are joining, um, group buys, I don't think they'll forget even they leave the hobby. Like, I think if you leave the hobby, I think you still know what's coming. At least I hope so. I hope, you, I hope you're not buying stuff and then just completely forgetting about it. I have a spreadsheet of like all of my purchases just to keep me accountable. Um, cause I don't want to go too crazy. Um, but yeah, that would be pretty funny. Let's see. Um, Bern Bernhard, I keep all of my keyboards. It's, it is a lot. My collection right now is, uh, <laughs> I think it's at least eight. I haven't counted in a while. Um, and it, cause I still have some more coming in. I have a GMMK Pro coming in. I have an LCK 75. And a sunsetter, so that's at least three more. So I believe I'll be in the double digits now. And you may be wondering, what do I do with all those keyboards? I keep them on display and then switch between them every two weeks because I have. Uh... Wait, why am I? Hold on, that's the wrong one. Um, is it? Why am I not? Okay, yeah. This goes this way. 
uh, I have two desks. So right now, this is my, uh, you can call it my, I guess my gaming desk, my streaming desk, my video editing desk, my evening desk. Um, it's in, it's in, it's in a den in my apartment, and this is where I play games, work on videos, and all that leisure, leisure stuff. And then I have a separate desk in the living room for my day job. And I switch, uh, be okay, let me put this down. Um, I switch keyboards between all of the desks, both desks, uh, every couple weeks or so. Um, but I, sometimes I do wonder if I should sell some. Uh, let's see. Uh, what plate am I going to use on the hotspot PCB? I, well, I mean, I only have the aluminum plate left, so I will use the aluminum plate on that. Um, I don't like how this screwdriver is magnetic. It ruins, it makes it harder for me sometimes because I am kind of not stable. Good thing I am not a doctor or a surgeon. Uh, so I'll be using the aluminum plate on the hotspot PCB. And I'll probably, uh, uh, have the first build with the hotspot PCB BD uh, U4T Thok uh, tactile switches. Um, I'm I'm more of a linear guy, but I've heard good things about the 4UT, and I might do a, re a review on them. So that's what those are. Uh, uh, that's what my first build for the hotspot PCB is going to be. Let's see. Sorry, let me, um, this is a, <laughs> it's very hard to multitask. I don't know how Teha does it. I keep like screwing up things while trying to answer questions while doing this. Let me just get, let me just seat this in real quick. Uh, okay. Okay, there we go. Uh, Grounding and keyboards with a with a car. Yeah, I I think I have unfortunately spent about as much as a used old car at this point. Um, but the good thing is, I um, you can the way I kind of justify it is that I don't I'm not really losing money in a way um, because I could sell it and probably recoup a lot of that cost. I know a lot of people like to flip stuff. Uh, I don't. I don't like to flip stuff, especially since like I have built it, and I feel like that should almost lower the value in some way um, than having it be sealed. Um, so I, I think if I were to just sell things, I could definitely recoup a lot of that money back. Um, yeah. Let's see, Albert. Uh. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you found value in that key in that video I made. Man, that was a while ago now, and I honestly don't think it was that great of a video. I think, I mean, like production-wise, I don't think it was that great. It was definitely one of my first videos, so it, it was pretty rough in a, lot of, in a lot of ways. But it had a lot of good info. I might redo some of my older guys at some point, either in late 2021 or 2022 once. There's more things out. Um, okay, so all the stabilizers are in now. Hmm, I just noticed something. I'm, I want to make sure I'm not crazy. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. I am not crazy. The reset switch is on top. Sorry, I'm like I'm making sure I'm not decided to install the stabilizers upside down or on the wrong side. Arrow keys are over here. These are arrow keys, right? Yes, these are arrow keys. And then, yes, and this is the F row. And it, this way, the arrow, key, arrow keys are not on the left. Okay, yeah, sorry. This is throwing me off. Um, I generally don't see like the chip and the reset button on top of the PCB. Um, <laughs> it's usually below. So it, it, it tripped me up a little bit. Um, but yes, I believe I am good. Let's see. Okay, um, honey, <laughs> I, I love my girlfriend, aka Leanne, let's see, okay, content over production quality always, yeah, I totally agree, um, which is why I guess they blew up, because I've, I've learned, I, um, when I made those videos, there wasn't really a lot of, 
beginner guides out there in terms of like a video format. They're all kind of spread across Reddit, maybe Geek Hack, and Keep Talk, or, or just like the 50 Discord servers that there that there is for keyboards. Um, and unless you know what you're searching for, it, it was very hard to find info on anything. Um, I mean, it was there once you found it. Like I obviously I found it, but I I've been in this for so long before I made those videos. Um, so I just naturally over time just found things. But for someone who just wanted to join the hobby and like next day want to buy a keyboard, it is it's pretty hard to find the info. So that's why I did those videos, and I'm glad that people found value in them. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, content create these days. Um, and even like Teha is starting to make more short form content about keyboard videos. So I'm glad that that's, that's a trend that's happening. Okay, let's see. Optional step eight middle gasket. I'm skipping the middle gasket um, as, as I mentioned because I don't like the muted sound profile too much. So we're going to step nine, which is switches. So switches to the plate. Okay, let's see. Your girlfriend is Team Tactile. Yep, that is that is a con. I am line Linears all the way. AKA Black Inks. So these are, um, we call them V1 Black Inks. The first batch of Black Inks, whatever. Like I bought these off Nautil Keys when they first came out. So these have the uh, loose leaf issue where when you, when you disassemble the switch to you know, lubricate them, um, the leaf could just fall out and it was a pain in the ass to put them back together like I think half of the switches that had loose leaf issues with me um, I had to just throw away because I just couldn't get the leaves back in um, but they are the smoothest batch of Kitaron Black Ink so the, v the V2 that you buy these days are not as smooth unfortunately so I'm glad I have that going for me uh, let's see Oh, Bassy Tech to Linus to Teha to the two times glass video, and then your thumbnail showed up. <laughs> well, that's 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 quite the uh, the click through rate to finding my channel. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little tangent here. Um, if anyone is interested in getting into content creation, streaming, or whatever. I do believe the best way of getting into this is starting on YouTube with short form content. I see a lot of people um, just like stream. And the problem with streaming is that you just don't get discovered. And you know, kind of like what Albert just said here, like that, that's, that's, that's quite the deep funnel to get to my channel, right? And that's the power of the YouTube algorithm. But when you stream on Twitch, or, or YouTube, I mean, I don't know how well YouTube does with terms of discoverability on streams, but on Twitch, like, um, there's, there's a lot of zero to one streamers and there's no way of people to figure out like what stream I should watch without actually dedicating time to a stream. So if you're interested in like into streaming or content creation, I do think the best thing is to create content um, that's valuable, build a following and start streaming. I guess kind of like what I'm doing now, right? I have. 26 congruent viewers, so thank you so much. Um, but if I were to just come out of the gates to start streaming, I, that would definitely just be zero or one. Um, okay, play here. Let's see, Be uh, best silent switches in the market. If you like tactile switches, I am a fan of the Boba U4 silent tactiles. The bump is pretty prominent, too prominent for me because I like linear, so um, I... Uh, that's it. That, 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 that. I should have looped. I, I, I didn't loop my U4 tactile boba switch silent tactiles. I kind of wish I did with like 205G0 um, because I thought they were just smooth just fine. Um, but the, the tactility is a little too much for me. Uh, so by lubing it, I could kind of reduce it a little bit. But overall, they're a great tactile uh, silent tactile if that's your thing. Um, but in terms of a silent linear, I've heard good things about these silent alpacas. Um, Durox also have silent tactile switches I, or silent tactile linears are probably fine. Um, I have MX Xylance. Those are kind of like the old school silent linear switches um, where they're built with a zeal housing um, and a cherry silent stem. So very expensive, but there weren't really any choices for a, a silent tactile, 
silent linear switch back in the day uh, and they feel great so now i'm gonna i'm just gonna put some switches into this plate real quick let's see okay it's kind of a tough it's kind of hard to put i can't tell if this is in or not it's kind of hard to get this in all the way i have heard that the black ink housing is um, doesn't work well with some palm plates. So I'm not sure if it's, if it's going to be the case with this palm plate. Um, let me just put some pressure here. Okay. No, that's another way. I'm just, I'm just paranoid, but you know, uh, it's definitely another way. Okay. Yeah. These are, these are going in. This is a black palm plate. One point standard, 1.5 millimeters uh, of thickness. So I'm gonna put it on the sides first. This is what this is what I like to do. Uh, let's see. Honestly, I like linear switches, uh, Fred, just because I just like how smooth they are. Oh wait, yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay. Um, I just like how smooth it is to, to type down on a nice linear switch. And tactile switches are nice sometimes, but sometimes it feels like I'm like fighting my keyboard. On these higher tactile switches, I think I think pandas are are fine, um, but I do like like uh, Ergo Clears the Navies a lot because it's a it's a medium to low tactile bump, and I, I do like that. Um, I yeah I do agree that the exchange between information between chat and streamer is just awesome. It's a really nice um, dynamic, right? Where I just feel like, um, well, well, I guess with streaming, like when you stream, you know, you're you're interacting with a live audience, like I'm doing right now, versus the other ways that we have distributed information forums, forums, yeah, forums, where it's all async and it just it just doesn't feel that personable. So I do like that. Hmm. Let's see. In your reviews about cat profile, I'm about to purchase a cat black on white set from kbd um i think cat is a i mean so so the first cat set i got was cat milkshake and i was reading so many things ab about the hype of cat profile and when i got them i just thought they were whatever i mean maybe i just don't really care too much about profiles um unless it's like essay i think essay is a little bit too high but between like cherry oem cat uh those are all fine with me um i don't really like uniform profiles that much like dsa but i'll use them um but back to cat yeah cat's fine i mean it, it's a nice in between of oem and sa um and yeah i guess that's all i can really say about it it makes your keyboard look a little bit different rather than just like a cherry profile keyboard it gives it more of a different look to it yeah Okay, let me just get these switches in here. Make sure they fit. So yeah, I'm just pushing the switches in. There's some people here who've maybe never built one, so I'm just showing everything I'm doing. Uh, I'm just putting the switches, make sure that the switch legs are going through the holes here. And yeah, that looks to be fine. So now I am going to just plop all of these switches on. Hmm. This might be kind of difficult with how flexible this is. I might, okay, I think I'm going to put the switches on first and then put the plate on. I think, cause right now you see how there's like this indent here. Uh, it makes it very hard to make sure the switches are in all the way. So I'm just gonna take the plate off first. Uh, I have not seen the Ven 60. Oh Lord. Okay. Hold on one second before I, before I start talking again, I'm gonna get this out. Um, okay. Let me just put all the switches in here first and then I'll put it on. Um, I haven't seen the Ven 65. I, uh, haven't, I haven't. I haven't been lurking on Geek Hack as much these days just because one, 
I have so many damn keyboards. Um, but two, I just been more busy now, I guess. Uh, it's just with job and, and, and like, even with like, just like, I guess YouTube, right? I, I need to uh, think about content I want to make and then go off and do it and edit and things like that. And that all takes time. So I haven't been lurking too much. I usually just like go on r slash met group buys and just quickly browse through that just to see what's new. Um, and then stay updated on vendors email lists. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen the event 65. No in between gasket. I don't want the muted, the more muted sound prof profile with the black inks. I want the sound profile of the black ink housing to, to come through. Um, so the black inks are made of some kind of special plastic that gives it a signature sound. I want, I want that to come through. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Teha definitely makes streaming look easy. I don't know how he does this. Maybe I need uh, to adjust my monitors differently. Um, he also has a really nice setup. I think he was a photographer, right? Before he was streaming. So he has like all the lighting and the camera gear and things like that. I, I definitely uh, went on a little bit of a slurge, splurge for <laughs> um, when I started doing YouTube. Um, my first few videos on my channel, if you go back however many months, um, they're all just shot on my phone and I recorded it over on a, a Blue Yeti. Um, and then once I decided, hey, I'm gonna go in on this YouTube thing. When I go in on something, I tend to go in kind of hard, which is probably why in my first year of this hobby, of like having spending money, I just bought so many damn keyboards. I was probably too much, but um, yeah, I go hard and I definitely bought, I bought a new camera, I bought a Sony a6600 just because then I can use it as a more travel camera as well, because I didn't want to buy the 6400 or anything because those have a smaller battery. I wanted, I wanted a larger battery life. Um, but for streaming, I just have a dummy battery that's just plugged into the wall. Um, I bought some lens. I bought like three lenses. I bought a 16 millimeter here for a wide angle lens. I bought a 30 millimeter for more normal looking shots. And I bought a, a 18 to 105 zoom lens just in case I ever need a zoom lens. Um, which I haven't really used that much. Um, but might get rid of it one day. Cause Tamron came out with a 17 to 70 millimeter f 2.8, and that I think could be a nice lens to replace all of my lenses, my 16, my 30, my 18 to 105. Because right now I constantly switch between the 16 and the 30 when I'm filming, and I'm lazy. Like, yeah, it's not that it does it doesn't take that long, but I'm very lazy. It was a lot easier. Is it would be a lot easier to have a zoom lens that does it all, and, I, and I'm willing to sacrifice some f-stop for that. Um, I did reserve the GMMK MMK Pro, uh, and the, <laughs> I think the main reason why I reserved it wasn't for YouTube content. That was definitely a reason, um, but it was because I was trying to buy the Satisfaction Seventy Five Round Two, and I didn't get it. And then I saw the GMMK Pro, so then I got it, or I reserved it. Um, store a quick story with the Satisfaction 75. In case you didn't know, the Satisfaction 75 is a was a super hype 75% keyboard, um, maybe because it has a knob and an OLED OLED screen or something. I don't know. I, I wanted it because it had a knob. I really like knobs on keyboards, and I, I really want a keyboard with a knob. Um, there were some issues with the group buy for the Satisfaction, for the Satisfaction 75 because of the Canon Keys checkout system. Cause it was a new system that's just built by Upaz um, solo. So it's bound to be some bugs. And the first day that um, that the group buy went live, the way the group, the group buy worked was that it was a somewhat raffle system where you join the queue, um, but then you get let in randomly. And then once you're past the queue, you still had to check out. So it's a raffle plus first come first serve system in a way. 
and there was there was a weird bug. I can't I can't remember all the details anymore. There was a huge uproar about it. I think people got way too mad over a damn keyboard. Um, but uh, I was like let in ish or something like that, but I couldn't see anything on the first day. It was it was some kind of bug like that. So. So I, I was under the impression that I made it past the queue, but for some reason I wasn't able to actually check out anything. And that and then they, they canceled the first day to fix that bug. Um, yeah, I think no one no one could buy anything. That's right. No one could have bought anything. So for anyone who made past the Canon Keys hype queue, um, they just couldn't buy anything. So they had to just cancel that day and move on to the next day. Um, and then on the, on the second day, I just didn't get past the queue at all. Um, so I got uh, like so I was pretty sad about it because like hey I actually like made I made it past the RNG queue the first day, uh, but I couldn't buy anything. And then on the second day, I just didn't make it past the queue, so I couldn't buy it. And then I saw the GMMK Pro come out, and then I just reserved it because one it looks like a huge value. Like if you're still looking for like. A, a custom keyboard and you want something that's not quite entry but also not quite um, end game which we don't really know yet because it's not out yet um, Google GMMK Pro um, and if that layout is something that you're into the 75% um, layout with the also with the knob um, I, I like knobs I don't know I think it's fun to just like change the volume with the knob um, then definitely look into it. It looks to be a pretty good value um, with, with what you're getting off that keyboard with the gasket mount system, the backlit LEDs, the south facing switches, aka normal facing switches. So it looks to be a good keyboard, but you're gonna have to wait for it because you're still shipping out the first batch and this, the next batch probably won't be shipped till like Q2, Q3. So there's some waiting there. Ooh, the Rama U80 Extra. Oh, sorry about that, Albert. Um, you know, I uh, I've looked at a lot of Rama keyboards, but I've never bought any of them. I don't know. I think it's because they're just they just take forever to ship, so I just never I just never bothered buying one. <laughs> um, so yeah, but Rama has been in the game for a while. I uh, I think there were there were definitely one of the earlier ones who come out with like more higher end keyboards at a consistent basis. Um, so they're, they're definitely a trusted vendor now, but yeah, they just take forever to ship. Um, Anthony, they did not send me back. I don't think they did. I mean, I, I haven't seen it in my thing, but, um, I believe it's a, uh, it's a deposit, right? So if you cancel your reservation, you will get the $70 back. But if you don't you you had to pay back the difference of 170, I think minus 70. So you had to, you had to pay the extra hundred when the keyboard ships. Um, so yeah, I don't think I got the $70 back because I did not cancel my reservation yet. Uh, I I don't know if the GMMK Pro ships worldwide. Um, I do know that Glorious uh, do ship to a lot of places. Um, you're going to have to Google or not to ship worldwide or to your country. Um, so that, that is one thing I do appreciate about Glorious getting to the game of like, um, higher end keyboards is that uh, they they just seem to have more I don't know distribution power I guess better supply chain of just shipping things to more to more places um, so like like the, uh, the, 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 the the G lube for example not my favorite lube but it's not a terrible lube and in the US where I have the privilege of buying Crytox to a 5G0 anytime I want basically um, for people who can't buy Crytox um, cause I believe like if you're like in Israel, I think it's hard to get, um, or like it's just very expensive. Um, you can buy the GLU for like 10 bucks and I think it works fine, even though it's not my favorite. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't, I haven't seen a Rama in real life yet. I don't think I did attend a meetup in Seattle. I'm in Seattle. Um, there was a Seattle meetup in January of 2020. Um, right before the COVID news broke out. So sometimes I do wonder if I got COVID from that convention, um, because after the convention, I felt 
something. I wasn't like totally sick or anything, but there was something there. I wasn't sure what it was. It was something I'd never felt before, and then it went away. Um, I never actually got like, I think you can get a test to see if you ever got COVID. I think they look for like antibodies or something. I never got that, um, but I think that'd be something interesting maybe for me to do. Uh, but I'm way too lazy to do that. But yeah, so what am I going with this? Yeah, never seen a ramen in real life, but yeah, I heard they are great quality. Ooh, yeah, GMK Civilization does look really nice. Um, there's a render of that um, on the mode website, I think, if you want to check it out. Uh, yeah, it looks, it looks great. Actually, I can just like pull it up, I think. Uh, let's see here, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, maybe it'd be easier if I just look at Let's do that. Oh, the group buys live? I I have not I'm not kept up with group buys. Um I don't know. Oh, I thought they did a render fit. Maybe not. But I think yeah, this does this would look great on this keyboard because it's literally like white and gold. Um but I do not have that. Right here. So oh that was not attached to the plate. Okay, there you go. Don't you hate it when you drop something and you have no idea where it went? Because I think I only have 86 switches, which is exactly what I need. One second. Oh, okay, there it is. Cool. Okay, I think we're like halfway there. Oh, I just yanked that one out. Uh, let's see. Well, let me check the comments here. Um, I bought Cry Talks from AliExpress. Um, I think that's a little sketch. I, I, I can't vouch for any vendors on AliExpress. Um, there's a good chance it may not be like a actual mixture, or like legit mixture. Or what's the term? So I bought some. Uh, Trebosis 3203, 3204 from Malaysia, I think, one day from some random event. I don't know why I bought that. Um, so I'm trying to remember the history here. I like I don't think I think they just did their own mixture of like greases, right? Because Tribosis 3203, 3, 3204, Crytox 205G0, they're all they're they're all like a mixture of things, and I think this one vendor um just did their own mixture and like when i got it it was like solid like the lubricant was just like separated things were solid so you had to like mix it up for, for it to be usable um i i think i did use it on a keyboard i can't remember which keyboard anymore <laughs> um but they all type fine but i probably shouldn't have done that um what am i saying with this yeah aliexpress no i, I the, the biggest thing with aliexpress is is the vendor trustworthy? Because the thing about the US vendors, um, a lot of them are trustworthy. I think they buy the 205G0 like mixture, I think straight from Crytox, if I remember correctly, or some kind of reseller. So it's like the actual legit mix. Um, so it's it will be more reliable. Um, but if you're gonna be spending a lot of money on a custom keyboard like this, I think you shouldn't be cheaping out on the lubricant. Um, because at the end of the day, a, a five milliliters of lube for 10, 20, 30 dollars can build a lot of keyboards. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, JJ. Appreciate it. Uh, uh Anthony, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, I would, yeah, I would do that. Yeah, you know, that's something that I'm. I never had to worry about as an American was like duties and import tax, whatever vats and all that stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad about that, but yes, yeah, it sucks for the people who do, do have to do that because it just raises the cost of these things even more. Hmm. Let's see, Albert. Uh, 
Oh yeah, yeah. You remember? You told me that you bought the Rama eighty yoke. Uh, do you know when, when? Does anyone know when that's gonna be shipping? Um, I'm assuming. Uh, maybe. Uh, what, when, when did you tell me? Was it last month or December? So I guess it would be either like Q one of twenty twenty two. I guess is when the Rama U eighty will probably ship out. Um, nice thing about Rama is that they do have extras. So you can just try to cop the extras. Why is this one? Wow, this one is not going in. Okay, there we go. It was in December. Okay, yeah, it might take a while. Um, oh, you know, speaking of like waiting for a long thing. So yeah, this hobby is a lot of buying and waiting for things to ship. Um, I am. I bought some Jelly Keys Artisans, the the Cherry Koi ones. I I can't remember which keys I bought anymore. I think I just bought two One U keys. I think. Um, and I haven't checked any update on that in a while. I wonder when that's shipping. I feel like I bought that Artisan a long time ago now. Um, but you know, it'll come when it come, I guess. Um, and I mostly bought that Artisan just because. It was cherry profile, and I like the koi fishes, but they were very expensive. I I am no longer buying artisans anymore. I, I the artisans I own are mostly the S craft artisans, the Pokemon's. Um, I have a couple of the Pokemon ones, three of them, Snor no four of them. Bulbasaur, I have all the starters. Bulbasaur, sorry, that's not starters. Snorlax and Gengar. So I have five of those. And then I'll have two of the Jelly Keys Artisans for a total of seven Artisans. Uh, yeah, I'm also excited for what this sounds like. I hope it sounds amazing. What time is it? Oh my god, it's been an hour and 11 minutes and all I've done is... put these switches into this plate and lubricate a stabilizer and walk through the unboxing. Man, no, I, I never watch keyboard build streams because they're like three hours long. And honestly, like, I always wonder, like, damn, why is it so long to build a keyboard in these streams? I feel like when I do it, it's not that long. Now I, under, now I understand. It's because I'm constantly talking, trying to keep y'all entertained, and it, it's slowing me down. But it's good. This is like we're hanging out, so it's all good. But I'm definitely going to be taking this VOD. My goal is to take this VOD and cut it down into like a 10 minute video or so. Um, because I don't like watching stream VODs because they're too damn long. So I want to have it be a digestible content. Um, my favorite Pokemon. Man, I, uh, I don't really have one. I feel like I used to. Now I just can't remember. I'm honestly like not too into Pokemon anymore. Like these legs aren't even closed all the way. What the heck? Hold on. Okay. Um, like I didn't. I haven't bought the Pokemon games in a while. Like there's Pokemon games on the Switch, right? Um, I I just didn't buy those. Um, I quit Pokemon Go a couple months after <laughs> lockdown. So I just haven't really been into Pokemon anymore. I guess I buy mostly on nostalgic nostalgia factor now um i can tell you my favorite eevee evolution my favorite eevee evolution is vaporeon probably because vaporeon is like actually kind of competitive <laughs> maybe that's why because i did do a little bit of competitive pokemon battling um yeah let's see Yeah, artisans are definitely a slippery slope. And Anthony, yeah, I agree. I always go to the typing test on stream pods because um, I just I just can't be bothered to watch all that. Maybe if it's like something I need like background noise, I'll I'll turn it on. But if I need background noise, I won't listen to a stream pod. I will listen to something that maybe will give me more knowledge. So for example, I listen to interviews, podcasts. Uh. Yeah, I guess that's like covers everything, I guess. Yeah, interviews and podcasts is usually what I listen to if I want background noise. So I just don't see the reason for a three hour stream VOD IMO. Uh, oh, the render was on Instagram? Okay, cool. Okay, 
we're almost there. And after this, I just want to make sure all these switches are. This one's not in all the way. In all the way. Why is this one not going in? Come on. There we go. Really hope it'll be easy to just lay this plate on this PCB, or else this is gonna be a pain. I think this is usually how I built keyboards anyway. I honestly can't remember. Like when I build keyboards, I just kind of do it. I don't really pay attention to how I do it. Uh... Do, 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 do. You know, I just realized all this time, um, I don't have any type of headphones in, so I'm literally just listening to my voice. Um, <laughs> probably, I probably should be listening to the same background music that I have on as y'all. But I forgot to set up the headphones, I IEMs or whatever, because I only have speakers right now, and I don't want the feedback to go into the microphone. Um, but that's fine. I'm gonna hold off on these, just in case. Actually, these one seems fine. This one seems fine. Um, nope, nope. Okay, yep. Take this out. Okay, let me put this plate on this PCB now. I'm sure it fits. Actually, sorry. Let me make sure all the switches are in all the way before I put the plate onto the PCB. Uh, just double checking here. Okay, that seems to be solid. Um, I don't know if it's quicker to put switches in after building the board. This is just how I do it. Yeah. Yes. Um, I do use a power supply with my soldering iron. So the, the TS100, I bought like a bundle and it came with a bunch of junk, honestly, but it did come with like a short power brick. That one wasn't all the way. Um, with a short power brick. Um, I don't use that because I have a old laptop power brick that power that I use it to power the uh, the soldering iron now. Um, so you you have like an old laptop with the power supply, you can just use that. But as long as the connectors the same, the, the connectors were the same, so that's why. And this plate is really flexible. Um, I'm gonna hold off on looking at chat for a little bit because I am struggling with getting switches in. I might solder the corners in first. Um, yeah, I'm gonna solder the corners first, I think. Because this is not great. Let's see. Let me make sure the corners are in all the way. This will make it a little bit easier, I hope, to make sure the rest are in properly. Okay. Um, okay, let me pull up the soldering iron real quick. Where did I put it? Okay. Got this got the iron. I need the I need the connect. I need the the power supply for the iron. Uh, oof. Okay. I need. I don't have like. I don't actually have like a stand for this iron when I'm not using it. This is okay. I'm just gonna do this. Uh, it's gonna kind of jank, but it's okay. And that's probably fine. Okay, yep, that's a bad idea. Um, as long as this, the iron is not touching anything. Okay, I'll figure it out. Oh, I need the fan. The fan makes a lot of noise. I was testing this on out on on private stream yesterday. Uh, I tried using RTX voice to get rid of all the fan noise, but that didn't work out that well. It left a really weird 
high pitch noise. So I'm just gonna turn down the gain on this. Um, and then turn the fan on. So you might hear a little bit of the fan. Hopefully it's not too much. I'm gonna turn the iron now to, I just factory reset the iron apparently. Whoops. Okay, that's weird. I don't, what did I just do? Okay. Turn this to 350 degrees Celsius. And I am going to solder the corners of this. I'm gonna move this table up a little bit actually. It's gonna look you can see me slowly fading away. Okay, I just need to see the pins um closer. SSO2. Other corner now. I can move this down a little bit. Just, there we go. Nope, I don't know if I did anything. Okay. Move my mic closer to me. Okay. Watching someone solder is like not very fun. <laughs> Y'all have any other questions while I try to do this properly? Huh. Some of these switches are like, the pins are not going in all the way. I wonder why that's the case. something that's pushing the plate up. I might just have to apply pressure as I solder these switches. Jesus, why is you why are you not why are you not going in? Yeah, 
there's like a weird something is keeping this side up I don't know what it is Try a different switch. Oh, okay. There it is. There's this one, <laughs> this one switch here was keeping this whole thing the side up. That's crazy. I never worked with such a flexible plate before. It's it's a it's a bit harder than a rigid plate. I just feel like there's a lot more um error error margin I don't know I can't I can't think of the word right now. It's just a lot easier to <laughs> to mess up I feel like I don't know why this is like it keeps it keeps sticking up. I don't know what's up with that one. I'm gonna start this one in just because this one is good. And I'm like I'm applying pressure and then just picks this stuff back up. easier to, to install once I saw there's some switches down. <sighs> Just in case you don't know what kind of soldering joint you're looking for, you want this uh, con K. Oh, okay, this is hard. Come on, come on, Jimmy. Uh, let me just stand up. Okay, well, that's a little blurry, but you essentially don't want a ball. You want a little like, like a little hill essentially on the on the pins. Wow, this one, yeah, these these are not <laughs> this is not working. Okay, come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. I don't usually struggle this much with installing switches. Maybe it's because I'm used to more rigid plates. solder down this middle one here yeah the whole like middle middle part of the keyboard none of the pins are like wanting to go through and that's very annoying Maybe I shouldn't do that. Okay, 
Okay, this one seems okay. Apologize for struggling so much. That's this is crazy. Come on. Mm. This whole thing is like bent now. <laughs> it's like a bow. Let's do this top one. And I think a third hand here would be really helpful. I'm going to try to This might be easier. I'm gonna try to take some of these out. Here's a random question for you all, if you are so inclined. Um, I'm more of a tea drinker than a uh, coffee drinker, and I usually just drink, like, honestly, just like, oh, come on. Okay, one second. Okay. Usually just drink, like, pretty basic bagged tea, uh, like jasmine, earl grey, green tea. I'm thinking, I've been thinking about buying something i guess like nicer i guess i will be in the loose leaf territory if anyone has any like recommendations for like teas let me know i would be interested in learning more Okay, I'm hoping by removing some of these switches, I can uh, get these ones in easier, and I'll plop the other ones in afterwards. Get mango black tea. Oh, mango black tea. I do really do like mangoes. I, I, I will say by far, mango is my favorite fruit. I love everything mango, especially when like the, in like desserts. Either whether it's like mango shaved ice or mango sticky rice. I love that stuff. So yeah, mango black tea sounds good. I'll, I'll look into that. This thing looks kind of bent. No, that's fine. Okay. Hmm. I wonder if the legs... Okay, yeah, this this was the right call. These are actually starting to go in more. Let me lower the gain on here so you don't hear the fan too much. Just clean this off. Uh, cacao tea, black mango tea on Amazon. Great, I will give that. I'll give that a shot. Thank you so much. Okay, 
I'm a little afraid that I soldered in my other switches a little too preemptively. Like, they, I think I could have pushed them down more, but we'll see how it looks in the end. Um, I hope. I just feel like these pins I just soldered were a bit longer than the other one. Uh, but we'll see. What are some of y'all's uh, top, let's see, top sandwich fast food chains? Like, for me, I eat at Jimmy John's a lot because I uh, I live close to a Jimmy John's. And overall, I think they're fine. Um, I, haven't, I haven't been to Subway in a while, so I'm curious if y'all have any fan favorites. Um, I know, like, Pot Belly is pretty good. I don't know if that's, like, a national thing, but... Uh, I haven't had Pop Bell in a while because a lot of the stores actually closed that, that were nearby. Okay, I really gotta push down on this one. Hmm. It's not s staying in. Something is keeping it from staying down. because of this. I don't know why these switches are not cooperating. Okay, that's a good one. as I solder more of these switches um, more of them want to stay down because they keep coming up and that's super annoying I've never had so much problems getting switches to stay down okay you know what let me I think I'm going to desolder this one this thing it makes, it makes desoldering so much easier I used to have like one of those cheap plastic ones and that was a nightmare to use come on This is very jank. I feel like at this by this point I should be done soldering a keyboard, but I'm just having so many issues with this. Not wanting to go in all the way.
a lot better. one went in nicely these ones are I think those are good enough Yeah, I am trying to speed through this because I spent way too long already trying to get these switches <laughs> down all the way. Oh my god, that was the most struggle I've ever had of building a keyboard. Um, it's also the most flexible one, so that's probably why. Okay. Got one row down. Let's get these other rows in. Does anyone watch anything uh, fun recently on, I don't know, Netflix or whatever? Uh, recently I finished watching Bling Empire and that was, that was something. I, yeah, that was something. Thank you. 
I forgot to lock it. <laughs> I increased the volume a little bit because, or sorry, the volume of the music because this portion is not very interesting because I'm trying to not burn my fingers essentially. Nope, I don't know if I should have done that one. But, ah, crap. All right. Uh, no, that's that's in that's in a lot. Okay. Tim Rogers reviews on YouTube. Tell me more about that. What's who's Tim Rogers? I started watching. I can't remember the channel name anymore. But there's there's a. Uh, there's a guy, he's an engineer, um, it's like how, it wasn't how stuff works, stuff made here, something like that. Um, you can think of him, you can think of him as a family friendly Michael Reeves, essentially. <laughs> he makes a lot of really cool stuff, um, like he had a video where he made a hoop where you can't miss because the hoop will follow the ball and then bounce off the backboard, um, so that, that was really cool. Um, he's a cool guy to watch. Action button. I'm not sure what that is. I like to make stuff. Uh, I don't think it's all something. I feel like making stuff was definitely in it. Wow, this one here does not. What's up with this corner here? Come on. Okay, there we go. Get in there. Game reviewer. Okay, I haven't, you know, I haven't watched game reviews in a while, and that's probably because I haven't really been playing too many games. Like I feel like years ago, I would play all, all the, all the games. Um, oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I didn't play like the triple A's really. I, I play a lot of, uh, whatever like free to play games. I would just download and play it. Um, but I guess as you get older, you just don't have enough time to play games really so I really just been playing Genshin Impact um, it's easy it's quick and I like playing Ganyu cuz she's fun I actually bought cyberpunk I put <laughs> probably <laughs> like five hours into it and then I stopped I should really be playing more cyberpunk considering I spent 40 bucks on it
Oh yeah, stuff me here. I think that was it. Yeah, he's a crazy guy. <laughs> you know, I am I'm terrible at math. Um and I think one of his videos he was like, Oh yeah, just do like a simple linear equation matrix thing and I was like, simple. <laughs> um yeah. Crazy smart guy. Okay, this is starting to look a lot better. I don't know why these ones are- the ones in the middle here are still kind of s not sticking out all the way. That's super annoying. Come on. There we go. really hard here. Hopefully I am not breaking the PCB, but I don't think I am. Oh, the channel is action button. Got it. That was a mistake. Okay, we are finally moving along. This took a lot longer than I thought. I thought I would be done by 8, honestly. It's already 7, almost 8 o'clock. leg over here. Come on. There we go. Are keyboard enthusiasts also audiophiles? I think there is some crossover. Um, 
I would say a lot of the expansive hobbies definitely cross over, whether it's keyboards, fountain pens, speakers, hash, slash headphones. Um, but I can't, I cannot be in deep in that many hobbies. Like I used to try to be really into the audio scene, but I just turns out I just can't really tell the difference most of the time. So I just go for a best bang for the buck, and now I am good. Like with this microphone right here. Uh, this is a neat worker, a neat worker bee condenser microphone. It's probably the best condenser microphone for the buck at like $80, $90 on Amazon. Um, you just need like an audio interface to go with it. And I got the M2, Mo2 M2 for that. And for headphones, I'm using like the Drop K, not Drop, sorry, Drop slash, not Sennheiser, something with an S. AKG, AKG K7XX. I had those for like a few years now. And I thought about upgrading, but they've been working out just fine. And I'm not, I'm not really sure why we'll upgrade too, honestly. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna start plopping in more switches now. I'm just gonna unplug that for a second. Dangerous, cause it's hot. Turn this up, okay. I'm gonna lower this. Okay back to what I was doing not too long ago, <laughs> but hopefully it will be better this time. Okay, yep, that's a lot better. Now it's like actually snapping into the plate. Um, that one did not snap. I, I'm worried about that one, but we'll see. Um, before it was so f flexible um, that it was just very hard to even do this. I might have to, this middle area is still very flexible because there's no switches around it, so I will probably still need to, yep, okay, cool. Uh, maybe I'll just solder some in the middle here, or just do that, okay. There we go. Uh, I'll do this. I'll do the stabilizer keys last. Uh, so normally, um, I guess like when you build a keyboard, you want to make sure the stabilizer sound okay before you solder, uh, because once you once you solder the switches to the PCB with the plate, um, normally. Um, you won't be able to remove the stabilizers to further mod them if you need to, but with this keyboard, there are large stabilizer cutouts just all over the plate, so you can easily disassemble the stabilizers. Or not disassemble, unscrew the stabilizers and remove them if you need to. Um, so that is, that is a great benefit with this keyboard um, because there has been instances where my stabilizer wires got popped and that will and I, I think stabilizer wires pop happens when you're removing keycaps and you're, you have more tension on one side than the other so the wires just plop out and you can kind of like jam your way in there like you can kind of jam the wires back in when it's like under the plate wiggling around but it's definitely a lot easier if you just had these cutouts um, so I appreciate these cutouts because then I can just tune the stabilizers whenever I want or put the wires back in a lot easier which is why I went with V1s with this keyboard um, I bought these smoky ones to match the black inks and I could have bought the V2s but the V2s are like slightly more expensive 
and they don't really offer much other than the new design which prevents it from the wires from popping out as often and with this keyboard I don't really have to care about that so I bought the V1 Duroc stabilizers instead okay Is anyone uh, thinking about joining any group buys that are happening this month or uh, in future months? Uh, GMK2Z is out on Omnitype. That keycap set looks great. Um, may or may not cop. We'll see. Because Leanne is also thinking about buying it. And does it make sense for both of us to have a set? Um, so we'll see. I'll see if she buys it. If she doesn't buy it, I might. I'll probably just buy it. Oh, I'm so glad this is coming along. Oh, that was a, that was a struggle. And since I'm using the seven, you, I'll, I'll do these in a bit. One second. Let me see. Uh, the bottom row, you always want to make sure you have the right switches in the right areas. Um, Cause there's like, there's like a lot, there's a lot of like, like pinholes, right? So you want to make sure you're using the right ones. And the way you do that is just by getting the, the keycaps and make sure they're fit. So since I'm using the 7U spacebar, I'm using a 1.51, 1.5 modifiers. Uh, yeah, novelties are really cute. I agree. That's definitely the biggest selling point. GMK dots. Yeah, um, I have GMK dots round one, which I haven't really used that much. Um, but once Sunsetter comes in, that's where GMK dots is going to live. Um, but they do have a light version now. And I don't know if I like the light dots or the dark dots better. Maybe it depends on the case. I don't know. Um, oops. Uh, the L, the the aluminum plate has been anodized. Uh, so I don't think you can get any tarnishing on it. Um, this is the palm plate right here, but the um, aluminum plate. From a quick look at it, it's been anodized, so I don't think you can, or it will tarnish. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let me go get uh, GMK peaches and creams real quick. Uh. Oh. <laughs> um, peaches and creams. I when I saw the render for this set. I loved it because it was like a pastel orange and then I got it and I was less stoked about it because it came out kind of neon-y but it is what it is you know that's kind of like the downside of jo joining GMK sets or sorry just like group buys in general you don't really know what you're gonna get until it actually ships um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't totally hate it, but it just wasn't what I hoped it was. Okay, I'm gonna put these ones back in here. Okay, oh yeah, I separated out the, the bottom row for, for this purpose. I'm gonna put this tray back, but yeah, we'll put the rest of the set on later. Um, let me make sure I'm, so let's see here. I'm just gonna do this. Okay, that's on this one. You know, when I was building um, the SP111, one thing I really appreciate about it, and I haven't seen this in any other keyboard, was that there were labels on the bottom row, which makes it easier to figure out where you should put your switches in a situation like this, when the bottom row supports a bunch of layouts. Um, I mean, you know, it's not like a deal breaker or anything, but it's just nice. Uh, I don't know how I should tackle this. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna guess first. Uh, 
This looks right. Let's see. Okay, and then this one over on the right side. I'm just gonna f do the outer, the outer pins. One, two, and then else three. Nope, that's not right. All right, so this one definitely goes over here. If I can stop struggling. But this one goes on the right. Yeah, I definitely do like that as well. Um, cult research. It just makes life easier. And I don't really know if there's any like downside with having the stabilizer stabilizers cut out um uh, maybe except for you know these keys maybe aren't as you know supported but i think this is nice so i wonder if that's something a, a thing that more people more keyboard designers will end up doing because i think it's a nice little benefit oh i totally messed something up here what the heck hold on um... Oh, I was totally right. I second guess myself. That goes there. This gap seems too high. And then this one is probably over here. Okay. That seems right to me. And then we're just gonna take these keycaps off. Okay, that's not useful. Hold on one second. That. And I really wish I can just take the keycaps off while the switch is coming out. I'll just so I don't second, third guess myself. All right, this is the outer one. All right, this is that. This one's to the left. Okay, now I've got to take the rest of these out. Okay, we're almost there. And then we can get to the fun part, which is keycaps and sound tests, which is my favorite part. I don't like soldering really but sometimes it has to be done and in case you're tuning in late um i have a solder pcb here because i'm using these soldered black ink switches um but i do have the hot swap pcb as well just for a different build uh i'll probably do the u4t tactile switches on those Okay, yeah. Wow, everything is like actually in now. Now I can just solder this and be done with this. Man, it's, it took way too long. Just one last double check. Uh, okay. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. I want to press the left button and then bring it up to 350. Oops.
I'm just curious, have y'all any picked up um, any sorts of hobbies during during lockdown? Like, I definitely have gone more ham with the keyboard, not in terms of just like building and buying, but also just like making content for it. So that, I would say that was that, this is like kind of like my COVID hobby. Um, I also have been uh, taking care of more house plants. I had a couple of house plants before COVID, um, but now I just feel like I have a little bit, I have a little bit more. It's not too crazy. Uh, those are kind of like the two biggest things to keep me preoccupied during uh, COVID. Okay, I'm trying to remember like what I what, I'm trying to remember what I did like pre-COVID. Right, it, it's been so long now. I feel like pre-COVID, I, I I probably just went out more in terms of like eating and hanging out with people. Um. And definitely like commuting. Commuting takes time, right? Like without commuting, that's for me, that's like two hours saved every day already. Well, I mean, not two hours, maybe like an hour and a half. Yeah, for sure. Keyboard. You no, know, keyboard has been a new hobby for a lot of people during COVID. That's why I, I think I think it has slowed down. Um, like early, um, no, no, this is like, like Q. Like middle last year to later last year, I felt like things were just selling out so damn fast. Like every time like novel keys would do a restock, um, things would sell out. Um, group buys for just like any keyboard really just sold out so fast. Um, I, I feel like things have slowed down a little bit. Um, I, I, I've noticed that with some group buys, they, they didn't sell out instantly. <laughs> Uh, but they did eventually sell out, which is which is good, right? Like you want group buys to be fully fulfilled, so that small designers don't have to front all of the money. Um, so it's nice that they're still being fulfilled and not selling out instantly, because that's like it's really it's really crappy when <laughs> things sell out instantly. Um, so I am sl seeing a slow a slowdown in buying. Or maybe that could be because there's been more supply, like there's been more group buys happening and just not enough people wanting to buy super expensive stuff. Um, but I don't think this hobby's dying by any means. I think it's, I think it's still strong. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Ooh, Anna, what's uh, what's your first group buy? I'm curious. Let's see, Dots, R2, Striker, or Mizu? Okay, I do... Between Dots and Mizu, because those are the ones that I have, I prefer Mizu. Um, I don't even have the novelties, I just like the colors, honestly. Um, I think Dots are like... If you want more of like a quirky keyboard, definitely go for Dots. Cause then once you like hand your keyboard to someone else, they're gonna be like, uh, how do you use this thing? Um, you no, know, I actually, I think one of the biggest surprise I've, I, um, I, I, one of the biggest surprise to me being in this hobby was I didn't realize that not, I'm sure a lot of people know how to type, know how to touch type, but I feel like there was a decent amount of people who don't know the to touch type and that surprised me. Um, I guess it's because like I, I had computer classes um, in middle school and where I had to learn how to type and there was even like this test where they gave you like a blank keyboard and you just fill it in like just fill in all the letters um, so I guess I've, I've always just been I've been knowing how to touch type from those and just been using the keyboard all my life and I was surprised to hear that there are a, lot, a decent amount of people who couldn't touch type um, or type above a hundred words per minute, I guess. I thought that was like, um, yeah, like 40, like 40 words per minute. I was like, wait, really? <laughs> like, that's pretty slow. Uh, like, I thought most people would be, would be in like the 80 range, would have been my guess. Um, but yeah. Let's see. 
I didn't say people were um, buying anymore. I just said I feel like it slowed down a little bit. Things are still selling, um, which is good. But a lot of group buys aren't instantly just selling out. I feel like there's been, like if you want something, a group buy, a restock, like an NK entry edition, I feel like you can just do it by being there um, when the stock comes out. Because it's been, there was a case for a long time where so when something got restocked, you're fighting so many people for it. But now I feel like if you really want something, I think you can just like you can you can get it, uh, as long as you're there for the restock on time. But that's just been my impression so far. I haven't been buying too much. I mean, like I've joined. I think during COVID, I've joined three or four group buys. Um, really, the only thing that really sold out fast was Satisfaction because I was like super super hyped. Vega lasted for a bit. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. Vega had a huge stock. The Vega in stock, um, I definitely went really fast actually. Um, but I actually had Vega in stock in my cart, and then I decided not to buy it because I was like, man, I don't know. Like I have so many sixty-five percent. Um, in the end, I ended up doing the group buy anyways, and I'm I'm, I'm really glad that. Um, AIO3 and Kevin just released so many units for the group buy. So like if you really wanted a Vega, you, you could have gotten it. Um, yeah. I, I have noticed that 65% tends to be kind of like the trend these days of like group buys and entry level keyboards. And I, I like that. Um, I, I feel like 2019, 2018, 2019, a lot of group buys were like for 60% or there were only like in stock 60% options. And for me, like I, I need arrow keys. Yes, I know you can bind arrow keys on a function layer, but I don't want to press an extra button to use my arrow keys that I use very frequently when I'm using my UI design tool Figma. You know, I can just do uh, command or shift arrow instead of doing command function arrow. That's just that's too many buttons for me to do on a regular basis. So I, I need my arrow keys, which is why I love 65%. Even though they don't look like symmetric or whatever, it's fine. Um, yeah. When I press back, I end up pressing the media keys. Oh, yeah, I totally get that. Um, I guess luckily I don't have that issue, fortunately. But you could consider like getting the 65% with blockers around the right-handed column. But I mean, if you don't use arrow keys and don't get 65%, you know, I'll definitely go for the 60. 60 does look nicer, um, especially in the seven U spacebar layout. Um, the cement, the symmetry just looks really nice. I have one just for gaming purposes honestly like when i want like maximum mouse room on my desk pad i'll just pull out the 60 percent mm. um but even within like 65 percent there, there are different variations right and the variations really just come down to i guess the blockers like for me, I, I want those arrow, I want that blockers before the arrow keys. I don't like having too many keys all smushed up. So for example, the NK65 Entry Edition. Uh, the reason why I didn't buy one, just because I just don't like that particular layout. Um, I, I, need, I need the blockers. I need, I need at least the arrow blockers. I'm so glad I'm almost done with this. Oh. Mm, 
I haven't looked too much into the IKKI 68, Eco 68. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's just so many like 65% these days. It's hard for me to keep up. Um, but that's good. I mean, more choices is always good. I remember you know, when I joined this hobby, like when I really got into it in 2019, um, there wasn't that many options for a more entry level custom build. So I'm glad to be seeing more of these keyboards coming out. Um, that's a little bit more affordable and accessible for a lot of folks. It's probably why I joined like 10 group buys in 2019. <laughs> so many group buys. My first, uh, let's see. Ooh, Alice layout. Um, I I have I have a Rukia that I that I do love, but the downside is it is a like it's the same size as, as a TKL, right? Um, so I ended up not using it honestly too much, like for game. Like I never use it to play games because I just want more mouse room. So it's like I only I will only use it when I'm just like casually just on my computer. Um, actually, you know what? The biggest reason why I don't use it too much is because it has the USB mini on it. And I am, sometimes I just feel too lazy to detach the cable to the USB mini connection. <laughs> um, even though you know, that's the whole purpose of getting one. Um, but it's just a little extra step that sometimes I just don't feel like doing. But yeah, I think the Alice, the Alice layout is nice. I don't know if it's like quote unquote ergonomic really, but I, it's something different essentially. All right, let me make sure I actually solder all the pins because there are some some times where I just miss some pins and I put away all my soldering stuff, and that's annoying. Oh, that one needs like a little bit more solder. Okay. I think I got all of it. Oh my god, I did not do that. <laughs> okay, and these ones are terrible. Hold on. I think I got distracted while talking about keyboards on these two here. Hold on. Okay, there you go. Uh, okay, that looks good. I'm gonna put a blob of solder on the tip. And then unplug this. I that it just came out. Got okay. Whoops. It's okay. This mat I have here. This is like my soldering mat. Um, I already got solder on this, so I it's that's I'm gonna pull it off. Okay, that's fine. Um, now we can get to the fun part. Put this. Let me clean up the workspace a little bit. Desk. Um, okay. Uh, uh, na, 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 na. So the blob on the uh, soldering iron, the tip when you're in, um, is to make sure it just doesn't get uh, oxidize too much essentially so if you don't have enough solder on the tip over time the tip would just oxidize and won't conduct heat as well so you just want to you're, you're essentially just protecting the tip with the blob of solder on top okay which is final assembly time oh my god I mean, this is the best part okay where is my the instruction says to set the top case face down on the assembly surface so that the threaded bosses are facing you. Align the as internal assembly plate PCB gasket and gently set down. Oh, okay. So I feel like I should attach this connection, right? 
No, I need the gasket. Where did I, what did I do with the gasket? I should probably connect the PCB first. Uh, so this little thing goes in here. If I can, come on, get in there. I'm I'm worried I'm gonna break something by doing this. Why is it so difficult? I'm doing this the right way, right? Um, uh, yeah, that seems to be the right way. Uh, I'll flip it just to see. Let's see. Nope, I totally had it the wrong way. All right, luckily I didn't push down too hard. Oops. Okay. This is, okay. Uh, this is kind of tricky actually. I keep, I keep moving the gasket as I set the PCB down. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, come on. Okay. So I, now I see why it's called a stack amount. So this is, you're literally stacking things together essentially, right? Um, so that's interesting. And then I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do it like this and see what happens. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's not even in the, oh, okay. Maybe I should just follow the instructions. Uh, okay. Yeah, I wonder why the wedge was sticking out. Uh, make sure. Come on. Okay, so it wants to, it wants me to take this and gently do this. If I'm reading this right, this seems a lot, this doesn't seem right. Sorry, this does not seem right. I, I feel like I'm gonna shift things around as I do that. Uh, Oh, this, oh, okay. Okay, let me just try this again and make sure the wedge is actually all the way in. Or maybe it's supposed to be like that. Okay, nope, that's... That's right. Okay. Got we we good. I just need to get the screws now. One, two, three. And start screwing these in. Oh lightly screw these in first. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm glad that you uh, found value in the spring video. That, that was my main reason for uh, making it. I noticed that no one just had one. So I was like, yeah, let me just buy all these springs and just do it. Because springs are honestly like pretty cheap in comparison to switches, keyboards, and keycaps. Um, so I just, I just bought a bunch of springs that I may or may not use all of them. And I was able to share some knowledge. I think most of the time, I, I spent a lot of time researching that actually because there's a lot of things I want to make sure I got right. Um, but yeah. Okay, tighten this, tighten this. Oh, I got I got to figure out this feet. Um, I'll figure out this feet after the stream. I wonder if I can compress the first leg I did. I guess I pressed down too hard on the first leg, which caused it to expand a little bit too much. So I'm gonna see if I can decompress it later. But um, wow, look at that. Okay, this is this is looks really nice. Um, this stack mount is really interesting. 
Um, I guess we'll see how it feels after you put the keycaps on. Um, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's go ahead and just put in the bottom row while I have these keycaps off to the side here. Stabilize. I might have over lubed the stabilizer. It feels okay. I'll see. Luckily, with the stabilizer cut out, I can just remove the stab, so that's great. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Okay. Medium tactile switch suggestions. I have the Bobo U4. Yeah, Bobo U4s are pretty intense. And the watermelon milkshakes are too light. Okay, so the watermelon, the watermelon milkshake. Well, actually, no, I, I never tried the watermelons. Um, so I can't say about that. But generally, I think a medium tactile switch is something. I think it, I think that would be like an Ergo Clear. Um, that might be that might be too light. So I would say even like Holy Pandas or Glorious Pandas, any pandas. And the T1s are less tactile than the Bobas. I, for me, the Bobas felt way too tactile. Um, so you can try like the T1s. You can buy T1s like basically anywhere. They're like Duroc Linears at this point. Um, and if they're too tactile for you, you can always lubricate them a little bit to reduce the tactility. Oh yeah, the Lilac Tactile. So those are, I believe, the T1 stems. Um, so you can give those a shot. Um, yeah. Sorry, I, <laughs> I almost put this up here because I'm used to 65%. Um, but now I have a nephro. Yes, I, uh, I totally did yoink this set off my Rukia. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to put peaches and cream on here. I might take Islander and put it on my Rukia and put Milkshake back on because I have DSA Milkshake just boxed up right now because this, is, this was originally my Milkshake keyboard which is why it says exclusive Milkshake exclusive is the designer of this keyboard Milkshake being the keycaps um, I also have a blank name tag too but I, I, yeah I'll probably end up doing that later um, I for some reason just wanted peaches and creams on this one specifically You know what? So, I have never built a 10 keyless, and I would say it's really nice where, because th this whole thing is just a 10 keyless keyboard, right? Essentially, um, so I don't really have to think about <laughs> what keys I need to grab, because every time you grab, you, you if you fill out like a 65% or whatever, you have to make sure the rows are right, and you gotta like dig, dig through it with all these other keyboard keycaps down here. So, this is this is nice. Um, I'm, I'm really just kind of like on autopilot here. I forgot to check that I did the right caps lock slot because this keyboard supports stepped. But I'm pretty sure I did it right. I, I never used step caps lock so I don't think I would ever put the wrong one in. Yep, that, look, that looks right. Yeah, I, uh, I, I agree. The, the audio file community is definitely smaller, but I mean, you can definitely find those jerks for sure. Um, but I do feel like there are you know, just a lot more jerks in, key, in the mechanical keyboard scene just because it's just a, it's a much bigger hobby, honestly. You get bigger, bigger hobby, bigger, more jerks, I guess. Um, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's really all just preference. Um, so one one thing I, li I like to tell newbies, and, and can't do it right now, but maybe when COVID's over, 
is if you can just attend the meetup because it's such a cheap way to try out all of the keyboards like why spend all of your money like me to figure out what you want when you can just go to a meetup and try keyboards that other people spent their hard-earned money on um so yeah there's that and then you can chat with them and get their knowledge because i'm sure the people who actually go to meetups are actually like nice people so yeah the, C the seattle keyboard meetup in january 2020 was my first one and it was nice just trying out all the keyboards and trying out a key cult um i would never pay for a key cult i'm sure it's very nice but from my time typing on i was like i don't know it's, it's a keyboard i guess <laughs> Oh yes, no, thank you for reminding me. Um, I did spring swap these, I totally forgot to mention. These, these Garon Black Inks have been spring swapped with Thick Fox Linear 62 Gram Springs. Um, the Thick Fox Linear Springs are probably my favorite springs out of the Spritz and the TX Springs I bought. And all of the all springs are fine. I just like these the best. Um, they are the hardest to get, so if you're interested in buying these, you have to uh, join the Thick Thock Discord server and wait for a restock. Um, but yeah, 62 grams linear springs. Uh, perspective. Yeah, I mean, nope. I, I will say, like, for some people in this hobby, you know, if, if all they want is just cherry browns and reds, I think that's fine, honestly. Like, <laughs> and you yeah, will probably save them some money. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, um, how, how do I put this? Like, some people want to explore more than others, right? And, um, yeah, maybe they shouldn't say, like, you know, it's like cherry browns or cherry reds are the best, but if they like it the best, then fine, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's what they like. And oh, that sounds nice. Can't wait for a typing test. Um, yeah, I have some friends who uh, who are interested in mechanical keyboards, and I've been helping them. And you know, not not everyone wants to go ham like I did. Oh wait, why the heck is my backspace? <laughs> why is it sunk down? <laughs> okay, I might. I wonder if I overloop these stabilizers, but that's okay. I can fix them afterwards. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely not a fan of cherry browns. I think they're just whatever. Uh, but they're cheap and they're av readily available. And some people don't want. Maybe some people don't. They just really like that. Really like tactile feeling. Oh, uh, uh, basically a linear. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's fine. Man, this, this is looking really nice. I don't know what y'all think, but I am liking this col color combo. Yeah, I think I over lubed the space bar. I'll, I'll fix that later. I generally don't over loop stabs. Um, I guess I was, I guess, yeah, I guess streaming <laughs> is, uh, it's distracting in terms of like, making sure I don't have too much lube. It's like multitasking, right? And it's hard. Um, my first time streaming and yeah, this is building a keyboard and streaming at the same time and talking is difficult. Uh, favorite keycap set? Um, man, it's hard. Olivia just looks so nice, right? Uh, I mean, I'm gonna say Olivia. Um, Olivia was one of the first keycap sets I saw when I was in university and I couldn't justify spending a hundred and whatever dollars on plastic keycaps. So the, keep, the group I was over and then when I saw all the pictures on Reddit, I was like, man, I really wish I have Olivia. And then when group by two came and then the round two came out, I bought literally every kit. Um, so I'm gonna say Olivia is my favorite. I just love Olivia so much. Um, yeah. But GMK Botanical also looks good too. I bought that for for Leanne, my uh, my girlfriend. Um, Botanical looks really great. I'm really glad that came out nicely. Okay. 
Okay, you know what? Who's ready for a typing test? Okay. So what we have here is a, you know what? Let me make sure the keys actually work before I say anything. Oh, wow. The, the USB-C cutout is nicely flushed here. Yep, all the key, all the keys work. Oh, these are media keys. Um, but you can, but I can change that in via. Did I stop the music? There we go. Oh, I muted the music. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this keyboard is via com uh, compatible, so you can just use via for that. But um, let me stop the music. Uh, let me stop the music. Oh, my keyboard's in the way. Okay. Stop the music. Let me pull up monkey type. Uh, change the scene. There we go. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move this microphone down. Um, okay. So before I test, quick summary of this. So today we have built a mode 80 10 key. Oh my god! I gotta change the camera. We have built a 10 keyless mode 80 keyboard in the celestial colorway, e white top gold finish i love it i messed up the second feed i'll fix that later um and we have it with gmk peaches and creams um with the switches being gear on black inks v1s with 62 grams linear thick fox springs now we're gonna do a typing test uh, move this over here so i can see it i'm gonna or take my microphone down. Okay. Is this still trying to see if I should turn it up a little bit. I think I'll turn it up a little bit. Okay, I think that's fine. Oh, I'm gonna change the focus one second. Uh, okay, uh, I think the bottom is actually the bottom is uh, aluminum, not brass, I believe. Okay, and here we go. Oh, okay, that was bad. I'm gonna do that again in a little bit. Um, the space bar is throwing me off. It's not returning as fast because I over lube the wires, the housing, maybe the housing, one of those two. So I'm gonna fix that later, but um, let me do another typing test. Yeah, yeah I, won't, I won't say anything. Yeah, I, my space bar is 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 being weird, but that's okay. What, what do y'all think about the sound though? Um, it sounds a little muted for me. I don't know. Let's see. I wonder what I wonder what it sounds like in the recording. I'm shaking the camera.
Uh, okay. I uh, got some work to do after this stream. I gotta, I gotta fix this, this, the lube on this space bar, and maybe the right chef. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested in here in the court. And honestly, this. I don't know, I wasn't really expecting this. I, I guess it, it is more muted than I was imagining, I feel like. Um, so I'm definitely glad I did not use, um, I did not use the middle gasket. Sounds something like inks are supposed to sound like, sort of like JWKs. Yeah, I, I feel like inks aren't supposed to sound like this. So that's interesting. I don't know what's up with that. Hmm. Yeah, muted clack. Yeah, um, there is bottom. So there's bottom foam because you need the bottom foam for the stack mount um, system. Um, there, there's an optional middle gasket which I did not include. Maybe the black inks are lube with two five G zero, but yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I'm I'm really glad it feels nice. It feels nice though. I'm glad I swapped out the springs. I'll do another one for good measure. Let's see. Yeah, you can see. Sorry, you can see the space bar just like not cooperating with me there. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's the build. I wonder. I'm gonna do a uh, a hot swap build later just to see what this sounds like. What this mounting system will sound like with uh, the other switches, right? So I have, um, I have U four Ts. Um, Fox tactile switches. What else do I have? I do have marshmallow switches actually, um, which are J JWKs, uh, I believe. Yeah, JWKs. I, I can't remember if V one V two, but maybe maybe the new one. Um, so I'm gonna try a bunch of different builds with the hot swap and see what that sounds like in comparison to to this. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's the streams. Uh, that's that's the build, guys. Thank you so much for uh, for joining me. Um, thank you so much if you stuck with me all of the way. Um, this was this was an interesting experience. I you know I always w was curious about trying to stream, but never really pulled the plug because one, I w w I didn't think anyone would actually watch me. Um, which is why I slowly build up a, a YouTube audience of subscribers. Um, but two, I just thought I would just be terrible at it. So let me know what you think. Um, I, I thought it was fine. Um, I think really the only big hiccup was the the switch is not cooperating properly um, initially by going into the plate, but I've got that figured out. Oh. <laughs> Cool. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks, Albert. Um, you know, it's a tactile gang. You know, not debatable, but. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, I mean, that's that's it. Let's see. It's eight fifty. So I need to go do my Genshin Impact dailies <laughs> before my resin caps out. Um, so I'm gonna end the stream soon. But thank you so much for for tuning in. Um, ah, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I'm your favorite YouTuber. <laughs> Yeah, so I, as I mentioned, um, I'll, I'll 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 cut down the stream vod to something like somewhat digestible and get all the good bits in, and I'll have the stream vod be unlisted but linked in the uh, shorter the shorter video, and so you can watch the full vod if you want. Um, oh yeah, I can totally do a typing test again. Sure. Um, let me just pull this up. Oh my god, I'm hungry. I need to eat some. All right, let me pull this mic back down. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm wondering why they don't really sound like inks. So like I figured that out, but let's see. All right, hopefully the space bar will cooperate with me this time. Let's see. Maybe it's, maybe it'll sound better in recording. So I'm I'm curious what it sounds like in recording. I'm just hearing I guess like what it sounds like in real life, which is a good testament into um, sound tests are not an accurate representation of what a keyboard actually sounds like. Because um, to me, just right now sitting here, like it sounds I guess it sounds fine. I, it sounds more muted um, than I was expecting. Um, but maybe that's what happens when you have a lubed. A black ink with some foam in the bottom, which but the foam was required. Um, yeah. Favorite affordable tactile? Uh, I think uh, any of the T ones variants are good. Glo uh, glorious pandas are fine. They do have the leafing issue, but if you're not too picky about the leafing issue, I think they're affordable. Um, U four Ts if you really like a tactile switch. Um, or sorry, I haven't tried U4Ts yet. I only have the U4s, but I'm assuming the U4Ts are like the same feeling, just not silent. It's my assumption. Uh, I still, I still gotta try the U4Ts. Uh, Otome Blue or Garon Blues. I for gaming, it doesn't matter. Um, but I've heard people prefer Otemo Blues. I think honestly, when it comes to gaming, and I'm thinking about, let me know what you guys think. I'm thinking about hearing a video about um, switches something about like switches don't matter for gaming or something like that um i uh i did make a video <laughs> a long time ago about like the key best key cap profile for gaming um and in the end it was and really the, the summary of that was like it doesn't really matter but if i had to choose one i like cherry but like i, I do hear that sometimes uh, like what's the best switch for gaming what's the best key cap profile for gaming it doesn't matter like i game on every switch like uh, I, I think for most people it doesn't matter um, because one like you're not competing at the top 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 level you know like you're not freaking um, Sinatra or something um, where maybe you can argue it matters but I think for most people it, for 99% of people it, use whatever switches slash keycaps you want you'll be fine um, but I, I need to somehow have some objective measurements in this video and I got figure I gotta figure out how how to do that and I think it'll be interesting to um could you know how some some switches have a shorter bottom out be, because of a longer stem pull aka holy pandas like it maybe I could do some kind of measurement of like oh man with holy pan switch since you bottom out faster it's actually like a point oh whatever percent faster increase or something like that like in the end like it doesn't matter i think it doesn't matter so i gotta figure out how to put some numbers into a video rather than just having it be opinions um just to further prove my point um but yeah <laughs> Yeah, I do have enough keyboards to do a switch test on friends. Um, I just need friends. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I could loan out some keyboards to folks. But like, hey, just like game on these keyboards for a while and just like tell me your opinions. I think I think that's an interesting qualitative way of looking at it as well. But I do want some quantitative perspective onto that video as well. Um, sorry, this freaking mo monkey type still on. Okay, there we go. Um, what keycap will help you win Among Us? Um, I think you need some blank keycaps you know you got you got flex your touch typing knowledge in among us let's see <laughs> um <yeah. laughs> uh, i think you know for the keyboard for that keyboard video i mentioned about gaming i think i should include some Razer and Steel Series keyboards. I just don't want to buy them. 
<laughs> um, I guess I could return to Best Buy considering I live so close to a Best Buy, but I feel bad buying stuff and returning it. But I guess I feel less bad if I'm actually in person returning it. If I was like, if I was shipping it back, I would feel bad because that just seems like a waste of resources. But maybe it's fine if I just walk over there and return it. Um, but yeah, I do think that video would need a razor or steel sear keyboard one or two. Um, I gotta think about that video more uh, how, how, about how I want to approach approach that. Uh, oh my god, I turned off the music. I gotta I gotta turn it back on. There we go. Okay, I am exhausted. It is almost 9 p.m. My bedtime is like 10 p.m. I gotta do my Genshin stuff. Um, so, uh, thank you for tuning in, everyone. Last question. Do you like coil or no coil? Um, I like coils. They're just expensive. <laughs> this, this cable was 25 bucks on Amazon. It was an Ascendi cable. I have my coil cable on my work desk. I just didn't want to buy another coil cable because it's like 50 bucks. Although the GMK2Z cable from Space Cable Group buys only $35, which surprised me. Um, only 35 for USB cable, but like, I know, but like, it is cheap for a coil cable. Um, yeah. Oh my god, the big switch from, yeah, the big switches from Novel Keys would be hilarious. Yeah. Uh, man. Yeah, I, the problem with that is I'm just, I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> I'd rather pay someone to make the cable for me. Cause I, I've seen some guides on how to make a cool cable and I was like, man, that's like work. I'll just buy one if I really want one. But you know, this cable, this ascending cable works fine. Um, I don't really care too much about cables. I, I, I can't care too much about everything with keyboards or it's way too expensive. Um, <laughs> I actually do have like a coil milkshake cable. Um, it wasn't like official milkshake group buy. It was just like a yellow and blue cable. I, I bought it from like, Met cables, you know, I think Met cables kind of like the OG, right, with the Google form. Um, but where is that cable, anyways? I think it's in the drawer, actually. <laughs> I think it's in the drawer. I don't use it because it doesn't have the it doesn't have the detachable end, and I need that when I use my Rukia, my Atlas, because it has a USB mini. Um, so that's why I I've been using this Asani cable here. But yeah. All right, enough chatting. I'm gonna head out. Have a good night, everyone, or a good day if, if it's daytime over there. Um, I'll, I'll catch y'all in my next video. I don't think I'll do another stream anytime soon. I don't know. We'll see. If you guys if you guys think you should do another stream, let me know. But um, my next video would be around... My next video will be a short down bot of this. And then the one after that would be something... I gotta think of something. I do have a backlog. So I'll, I'll look at my backlog of, of ideas. But cool. Have a good night, everyone. Love y'all.